If you're using protein to achieve a weight loss goal, it's really crucial that you don't make these five mistakes. Otherwise, it could completely work against your weight loss goal. And that first mistake is actually getting enough protein. Protein has been studied to be extremely useful for achieving a body composition goal, which is where you're losing body fat, but not losing muscle. And that's exactly what you want when you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal. You don't want to lose muscle, you wanna lose body fat. But not too many people are actually getting enough protein to reap those body recomposition benefits. In fact, most people think they're getting more than enough Enough. And unfortunately, this is based off of the USDA guidelines amount of protein needed per day, which is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. This amount was never intended to be like a golden rule for how much protein you need to maximally perform and achieve weight loss goals. Instead, it was really just meant to be not to get a protein deficiency. When in reality, those studying protein are finding that a minimum of one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight is needed. And even this is still low for most people, even if you're just like moderately very, very low level of activity. In reality, it's closer to 1.2 as a minimum. And if you are active or exercising, you're going to want to about 1.6 grams per kilogram body weight, which is double the amount of protein that the USDA guidelines recommend. Which, duh, why no one is seeing those benefits of protein when they're consuming half of what they need. And I have a whole video on where you can calculate your protein needs with these standards of 1.2 to 1.6. Really easy to do and super important to know. I'll have that linked in the description so you guys can check that out. But on top of that, protein is also needed to prevent hunger and snacking. Because when we eat protein, it releases a satiety hormone called peptide YY. And when that's high, it tells our brain that we aren't hungry and we don't need to eat. So it also helps to shut off sugar cravings that we might experience that would work against weight loss goals. In fact, low levels of that hormone peptide YY has been associated with obesity or weight gain. Which if you're new here, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition, human performance. On my channel, I teach you tips and strategies on how you can achieve your weight loss goals. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Okay, the second huge mistake is counting all proteins as protein. Not all proteins are equal and not all proteins should be counted towards your total protein needs. For example, collagen is often used in smoothies as a protein source when it's not actually a complete protein. So your body doesn't use it in the same way that it would like Greek yogurt or whey protein. So when working towards your protein needs per day, you want to make sure that the vast majority of that's coming from complete protein sources. Otherwise, you're not actually really getting those body recomposition perks that you're looking for. So if you do eat animal products, it's pretty easy to make sure you're getting complete sources from fish, yogurt, eggs, chicken, meat. But if you're purely plant-based, you want to make sure that you're opting for the highest quality protein sources available to you, which means prioritizing complete proteins from plant-based sources. So this would be things like from protein powders or fermented soy products, and also making sure that it's a high diaz protein, which is really just a scoring system. It tells you how much protein you're really even digesting from the protein that you're eating. But for example, some of the higher diaz scores or proteins from plant-based sources would be things like green peas, edamame, protein powders, soy, and fava beans. Interestingly, potato is actually really high on the diet score, but it comes packed with so many starches that it's not necessarily something that would work for your weight loss goal. Although I think I have even seen that for plant-based proteins, there's like potato protein powder, question mark. <laughs> but if you are purely plant-based, something to look into. Okay, the third protein mistake is something that's protein powder specific, and it's actually knowing your protein powder serving size. For example, if a protein powder is advertised as having 20 grams of protein, you need to make sure you know how many scoops of that protein equals 20 grams, or what's considered one serving. I see this happen with a lot of my clients in AM peeps. Oftentimes with something like a whey protein powder typically requires two scoops for one serving. Many plant-based protein powders, on the other hand, are usually going to be one scoop is a serving. But because of this, if you're going from like a plant-based protein and switching to a whey protein, you might just assume that one scoop is one serving and then you're only getting half of what you intended. So just make sure you check what the actual serving size is if you're using protein powder so that you know you're getting what you're intending on getting. Okay, the fourth huge mistake is eating less protein as you age. For some reason, a lot of people think that you need less protein when you get older. It's assumed that because you're maybe less active that you don't need as much protein. This is not true. In fact, your needs are likely about 25% higher than they used to be. This is because as we age, age, we start to lose bone and muscle pretty quickly. So you're already working in essentially a protein deficit. So for most people, when you start to experience bone loss at an accelerated rate, which is usually around the age of 50, you really want to make sure that you're hitting your daily protein needs from complete sources. So this might be more on the side of 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And I know that sounds super confusing, but please just go check out that video I mentioned on how you can calculate your protein needs. It's really simple once you actually do it. And it's like a three minute video. Okay, the fifth protein mistake that's working against your goals is that you don't 
actually have these proteins on hand. If they're not there, you're not going to eat them. And protein tends to be the most time consuming to prep, especially from animal based sources where you need like 20 or 30 minutes if you're baking. And if you're in a pinch and you just need something, you need to make sure you have fast, easy, available protein sources, preferably that are pre cooked. Some of my favorites obviously include protein powder, which you can just toss in a smoothie or stir into yogurt to increase the protein content, hard boiled eggs or those pre cooked egg bites, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, which I've actually seen that there's even plant based Greek yogurt options now too that are actually high in protein. And then rotisserie chicken is really great because it's pre cooked and all you have to do is tear off pieces and add it into your lunch and you're good to go. Beef sticks are another one, especially if you're traveling, that can be really easy to take with you, but it also comes in turkey. And I think even there's like salmon options too, which speaking of another really great option for a fast protein source would be canned tuna or really canned fish in general. I like the brand Safe Catch, Lowell's not sponsored, <laughs> but they're just really great low mercury option that you guys can check out too. But one of my favorite fast, easy, high protein options to be getting in is a smoothie because you can just dump everything into the blender, blend it up and you can just take it with you. So if you wanna check out one of my favorite smoothie recipes that's high in protein, you can check out this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. I'm out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.